Hi, and welcome to West Shore Unlimited, a local look at the rapidly growing West Shore community and why it's one to be proud of. We're here to showcase your stories and learn a little bit about the great community that we live in. We're today up at the Weston Bear Mountain Golf Resort and Spa. And speaking of growth, the West Shore has just been listed in Census Canada numbers as one of the fastest growing communities in Canada. And I might be a little bit biased, but it is stunning up here, even in the rain. And not to mention the 36 holes of Championship Golf. And the spa, Bella Montagna Restaurants, and Panache. We're here to golf though, right? Yeah, I thought we were going to the spa. I'd heard that you need a little help. Yeah, we'll see about that. A little later, we're going to learn about an event held right here at Bear Mountain that highlighted why the West Shore has been attracting so many new businesses and how leaders in our community intend to ensure sustainable long-term growth. And another major success is City Centre Park. It's one of the busiest places I've seen down in Langford. Jerry, you work down there. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, we have a lot of great stuff here for people from all over Victoria to enjoy, including the brand new West Hills Ice Arena and our brand new bowling alley. Victoria bowling alleys had all disappeared by 2006 due to high urban land prices and locals were traveling as far as Duncan and Nanaimo to play their favorite sport. Langford Lanes has filled that niche. grand opening was October 22nd of 2011 and since then it has been moving. In the past few years this area has undergone a major transformation. It's now home to West Hills and its state-of-the-art ice rink, city centre park, the new home of Rugby Canada and an array of other family and recreational activities. It's just the atmosphere and the fun and obviously the cosmic bowling. We do cosmic bowling which is a huge success. Um, so people come out and it's every Friday and Saturday night uh, and it starts at 7 o'clock and it goes until 1 a.m. On a typical Friday night, the massive big screen TVs blast the latest music videos and visual effects and black lights create a downtown nightclub effect. It gets really busy in here. Uh, we have a full service area and bar, plus the Galloping Goose Grill. Um, all of our 20 lanes are fully licensed, plus what sets us apart is our VIP room. So our VIP room uh, is six lanes, and it is an exclusive room. And basically, it's got a full service bar. You have your own bartender, your own uh, server. It's got couches, really comfortable couches for the lanes, uh, big screen TVs, huge projectors at the ends of the lanes. Uh, and you can use your own music. You can do your own video. I would suggest coming in, if you want a bowl, I would come in about an hour ahead. Put your name on the wait list, enjoy some food in the Galloping Goose Grail, have a drink at the bar, um, you know, and then that way you're in and you've got your name. And then if you're eating dinner and you get called for your lane, we can bring it right out to your lane for you. The specialized machines and robotics in the back of the lanes are nothing short of remarkable. Ryan Bell is the operations manager for Langford Lanes and he makes sure the strikes, spares and good times keep coming all day long, no matter how many gutter balls you might throw. Alright, so once the ball comes up and hits the pins, it crosses an infrared beam which tells the machine to recycle all the pins. The deck, the deck will come down and pick up all the pins that are remaining, lift them up so a sweep will come and take the, all, the broke, all the ones that fell down away, reset whichever ones are left, unless of course you're good and you got a strike, they're all gone. After that, the pins all fall into a pit, get lifted up by a tower and put back into the top section so it can be replanted on the lane. The ball comes out and through a chute and gets put right back to the bowler's hand. With many different levels playing in 18 weekday bowling leagues, plenty of players are enjoying the brand new state-of-the-art facilities and many in the crowd are avid bowlers who keep coming back. It didn't take long for John Derica to make Langford Lanes his new home. As soon as the lanes opened last November, he was honing his skills. When I found out this was going to open, you know, I was like the first, couldn't wait the league started. 
because I love this game. John is one return customer with bragging rights not many bowlers have. A perfect score. All the first couple of strikes is anything normal. I did two strikes before in a row. But then when, when I came on, I sort of went into like a routine, like a rhythm. So every time I bowled a strike, I went down there. So I don't get nervous. I say, I forgot, forget, forget the game. And I'd look the other way just to ignore everybody else. So I got to around the ninth frame. Now it's starting to kick in here. I got nine in a row. So nerves are coming around. Now it's, the, the lane is getting a little quiet. But I'm focused, I'm staying focused on the lane, you know, ignoring everybody else. And then, uh, 10. Oh, oh, here we go. There, and then I see people coming in. 11. Then I bowled the 12th one, and I'm like in shock and first off. And then I hear this big crowd in the back. And then I look around, where'd they come from? Because <laughs> I'm focused in again. And then, and the first thing I say, like I said, all I wanted, you get a bowling ring in the league. And a perfect game, uh, 300, you get a, a ring. So that's the first thing I, I say. I, I got my ring. That's all. It took a long time, but I got my ring. <laughs> a professional bowler can earn up to $1 million a year, and throwing a 17-pound ball down the lane with accuracy takes strength, flexibility, and keen strategy. But for many bowlers, it's more about having some laughs and getting a little exercise with their friends and family. Smack Dab Video Productions providing complete video production services in Victoria, BC. With us now is General Manager of the Western Bear Mountain Resort, Francis Parkinson. Francis, I want to thank you very much for being here with us today. It was our pleasure, Jerry. Love to have you here. Now, can you tell us a little bit about this beautiful resort that you have here and what people can do up here? We've got 36 holes of golf. We've got a fully equipped uh, mountainside athletic club. We've got lots of hiking trails and mountain bike trails. We've got restaurants in the resort. Uh, we've got speciality rooms that can cater to small parties or large parties. We're a full service resort, Jerry. And now the spa, I know, is, is, is a great place. And unfortunately, we lost yeah. Kira at the spa today. Uh, but my special favorite up here is the golf course. And I was wondering if we could maybe get out there and hit a few. Well, even with the rain, we can get out and hit a few balls. But I, I understand that uh, you maybe need some practice. And I've arranged for John Randall, our uh, director of uh, the Bear Mountain Academy, to give you a few tips before you go out on the course. Well, I, I do appreciate that, and uh, I'm not sure if you can, ha can help my game, unfortunately, but uh, I'd love to get out there and swing the club today. That'd be great. Well, let's go do it. I really like your golf swing. What I'd like to see out of you is just a little more aggression. Can you swing harder? Aggression I can do. Hang on to that for me. Oh, what do you think of that? That was really aggressive. Hey? I like it. Hey, well, you know what? Thank you very much for the tip. I make sure I'll bring that to my game next time. Sounds good. Hey, you know, one thing I want to mention is about this great community that we have up here. And, uh, you know, a prime example is this past weekend where we came a little bit short with the Haiti project that uh, Chief Bob Baggett was, uh, was headlining. And, uh, you know what, we were $15,000 short to reach the goal right. for the Haiti project. Uh, Mayor Stu Young stepped in and put everything on hold and said, hey, we need to raise some money. We need to come together as a community. And he did exactly that. He raised $21,000 in a matter of two or three minutes. Well, I'm, I'm very pleased and, and proud to be able to update our community on their project. Um, this was a, a Mayor Young and Council initiative uh, immediately following the devastating earthquake in Haiti to uh, find a project. And in fact, in cooperation with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, uh, we found an orphanage um, in Port-au-Prince, Haiti that had been devastated, uh, totally destroyed. And we took it upon ourselves as a community to reach out and to to help the children and the two sisters of this uh, orphanage rebuild uh, their orphanage. Uh, we need to raise $15,000. This is not an easy task. I know you didn't come here prepared to do that. But uh, is anybody here? How about Jim Hartshorn? I think we talked to you earlier. How about, how about $1,000 from you to start it off? What do you start? 
How I, I start? Okay, Alpine a thousand dollars. I'm in, and 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 I'll match that with a thousand from my golf tournament. So there's two for me, and if I can get, I need thirteen. They'll match that too. So I have four. Anybody else want to? Ron? Yep. Thousand bucks. Thousand bucks. Mickey, that's six. Jo John, I, I said you didn't have to do that, but thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for sitting. So that's sixty-five hundred. Monty. Thousand, thank you. Seventy-five hundred. Five hundred from Gary. That's eight thousand. So that's nine, Paul. Thousand. What's that now? I think we're at six again. So. <laughs> Mike Wignall. Thousand bucks. Bear Mountain. Gary. Thousand. Thank you very much. Fourteen. Thousand from Lamona. No, hold on. We we need extra money for like <laughs> school supplies and things like that. Ron Cheek? Uh, Log House Club, 500. 500, Log House. New Rugby Canada, 500. Rugby Canada, thank you very much. New resident in Langford here, new team. Thank you very much. West Hills for 1,000, okay. 21. Wow, that's a little more than I thought today. Excellent, thank you very much. Obviously, and I know, thank you very much for sure. It's just, uh, it's impressive. Fantastic, isn't it? It is, it's a great, great community. But you know, enough of that. I'm going to go back, play some holes. Hey, Thank you much for the tip. I'll bear. see what I can do out there. We'll see you soon. And I need, might need that. Really? <laughs>
create con communities or environments in which the economy is very competitive, the taxes are low, and you are able to balance your revenue with amenities that you are providing to your citizens, you will be very successful. In other words, the idea is to be able to have good revenue stream, but be able to invest these amounts, these revenues, into the amenities and the well-being of the population. I believe that attracting new businesses will be very important. In a very competitive environment, having more or bigger revenue stream will be important. They need to safeguard what they have. They have to make sure that those who work and function in this city will be well off, these businesses. They also need to be very uh, active in making known who they are, what they are, their advantages, keeping their taxes low will be another important element. And those principles put together can create another place, another a beautiful working environment. Another element is to make sure that if you come and you work here, that you will have wonderful amenities. So the combination between economy and the environment and people's well-being is extremely important. Usually communities, good communities, are a combination of a few, a few things. The idea is to be able to create prosperous and sustainable economy, to look into good environmental principles, to understand cultural issues, what brings people together, and also to care for the people who live in it uh, from a societal point of view, say demographics, aging and so on, to have room for every sector of the population. Building homes, the home provides, if you want, the backstage. But successful places happened when the people who move into those places started to act as a team. They understand that there is a give and take. They understand that they need to make their community successful by contributing to their environment, by collaborating with one another. These are what successes are all about. In just a moment, we're going to learn about a great new addition coming to the West Shore, so make sure you stick around. Great amenities make for a great community. We've heard all about the efforts to make Langford both livable and affordable. We were able to catch up with Jenny Edgecombe, CEO of the Greater Victoria YM and YWCA. They provide recreational services and a ton of amazing programming. Soon, they will have a fantastic new home near West Hills in Langford. Well, the Y has had plans for a long time to move into the West Shore, which obviously is a growing area. So we have plans for a new facility in Langford and um, it's going to consist of uh, a large pool area, recreation pool, um, a great hydrotherapy pool, pool slides, wave pool, lots of fun activities for the whole family and in addition of course the Y will have uh, multi-purpose space, um, a licensed childcare center, uh, fitness and uh, room for lots of different programs for all ages and abilities. And now it's time for a Chamber Minute with our new president and my friend Stephen Whip. Let's put the values out front. So is it all, always, always profit? And the majority of people said, no, that's not what we want the chamber to be looking at all the time. It's about the quality of life. It's about creating a healthy community. It's about making sure that, you know, the forests, the trails, the, the water that, that we all enjoy around here is here for future generations. And so that's not a, a simple task because you've always got pros and cons on both sides and especially today given the economy it's very difficult for often for councils to wrestle that to the ground and say no we're going to stay this way because we know it'll create employment we know it'll create opportunities for business and we also know it's going to create a healthier community so it's about measuring all the impacts when we do stuff. So we, we proceeded with that. We included all five municipalities in the process, including non-members as well. And quite surprisingly, we came up with a charter that I think uh, every one of our, our members is very proud of. And I, I think that has a lot to do with the growth that we're seeing in, in the chamber. Chamber is growing about 20% per year. Um, we do not know of any other chamber in the province and probably not in Canada that's growing the same rate. 
So I think some of that has to do with that. The other is, is the staff we have. The staff are, are using that charter to make decisions. It's like a lens, if you will. So it goes everything from the paper you used for, for, for copy machines right down to what are we, how are we setting up um, entertainment or, or, or gala events for our clients. So what does that mean? It means local food. That wasn't part of what the chamber used to do before. And with that, of course, we're seeing ourselves getting more involved with the farming community trying to see what we can do to encourage more farming and get those products delivered to market locally so that it's not just the restaurants, etc., who get the opportunity to buy local, but it's also residents who can, who can give themselves a healthy lifestyle by eating properly. There's a ton of new people and businesses in the West Shore today, but this business in particular has been around for 42 years. The building at 786 Goldstream Avenue is 100 years old, but when you enter the doors, you'll find it's not the building that's unique, it's the tenants. Sylvia Ratcliffe, her family and staff. Meet Sylvia. And I always say it on the, on the radio station, I'm Sylvia from the Cloth Castle. The Cloth Castle! And we started in 1969. Her family business has been on the West Shore for 43 years and sometimes you'll find up to five generations of family at the store. And there's my daughter right over here. That's my daughter. Come over here, Bonnie, Hello. for a minute. Yes, could you just come over here for a minute beside me? This is, this is my oldest daughter that was only just a little, little tiny girl when, when, when I used to bring her over here to the way down by the fish and chip store. That's where we were at. Yeah. So, Thank you, Bonnie. Bonnie still <laughs> helps out now and sends her children here to, uh, to uh, take sewing. And Bonnie teaches the beginners children's class. Bonnie specializes in home decor. Her work is on display throughout the store. So these are all fabrics from the Ty Pennington design. So what we've done here is we've made a duvet cover using several of the Ty Pennington prints. Here we have the small piping joining the two different materials, the larger and the smaller print, and then we have the wider piping along the edge here. The duvet zipper is hidden in the back here. We've used different um, pipings on the pillows. This is a pre-made piping that's sitting along here, the brown piping, which we sell by the meter, or this one is a different technique where we use the fabric, cover it over the piping and inset it into the pillow. Well, quilting started in the early days when uh, women wanted to get together and they took up, co up apart coats and old fabrics that they had in the house and they got together and it was like women got together and worked on quilts together. Now it's become so big, it's an art, really, it's an art. If you watch it, if you look at the quilt, some people now are doing embroidery work on it, which they never did. Then everything was done by hand. Now it's done by machine, a lot of it. Brian is Sylvia's grandson. He's an expert quilter and can tell you just about anything about what's inside the store. Brian has been working there for 21 years. He showed us one machine that makes embroidery a lot easier than it used to be. Well, uh, the nice thing about the embroidery machine, you can get software that allows you to enhance it. You can do things like take pictures of people and digitize it and convert it into stitches and stitch it out. So a lot of people take old family heirlooms or pictures of their dogs and they stitch it out and then sew it into a quilt and it makes it a really personal, unique experience for them. Many of the staff have worked there for decades and they each have their own interesting skill set. Meet Barry. He's a certified industrial mechanic. He works in the repair center and does a ton of other stuff around the store. There, I'd like you to meet Vandy over here. That's one of my employees. She's my coffee partner. I get together with her every morning and have coffee, don't I, Vandy? Yes, you do. I do. Yes, we do. We we get together with some men in the community and and the um, the barber shop guy and and a retired uh, fireman. We get together and have coffee every day. The key to all this energy is a good laugh with friends every morning before work. When she isn't at the store, Sylvia usually isn't far away. You can run into her having coffee or even doing Bikram yoga next door. 
At any given point in time, Sylvia has about 10 things on the go, and she certainly isn't afraid of doing the heavy lifting around the store. You really learn to have muscles in this store. In 1980, Sylvia moved the business to Goldstream Avenue. The business was previously named The Yarn Barn. They changed the name to The Cloth Castle to reflect how the business had changed from its inception. It's now famous for being a hub for the local quilting community, which consists of at least 300 quilters on the West Shore alone. Well, we're teaching children, beginners, uh, to how to learn to run the sewing machines. So in the beginner's class, uh, they can pick an item and they can sew that item directed by a teacher. However, if they're doing a class that's a quilting class, they will be given a pattern, they will buy the fabric, they will bring their own sewing machines or we will provide or help them get the right sewing machine that they can start on and work on and make their quilts. It takes around four weeks to make a nice quilt. If you're interested in picking up some sewing skills, this is the place to do it. Thank you for visiting us here at the Cloth Castle and seeing what we have and we hope that you'll come back and, and we can share things together and you can share with me and I can share with you. Thanks again for being here. showed me a few tips out there today. Good, sounds like we both had a fantastic day here at the Weston. I know, I sure did. And remember, this show depends on story ideas and contributions from people like you. So if you have something you'd like to share, we'd like to hear from you. We also rely on a team of dedicated volunteers. So if you have TV skills, like this, make sure that you share and let us know. Give us a shout, contact us on our website, westshoreunlimited.ca. Thank you, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Cheers to that. It's been a great day. Oh, that was a great day. My nails look good.